Margareta Local Schools began embracing the science of reading three years before Ohio mandated districts use the evidence-based teaching practices. The approach was foreign to many teachers, most of whom were teaching children to read using curricula based on whole language, balanced literacy, or three-queuing. These methods don't ground students in phonics. The dramatic, difficult, and expensive transition, which Margareta is trying to implement at its high school, not just in elementary grades, is showing exciting results. The urgency of the initiative was COVID. Children trying to learn with teachers with a mask on was next to impossible. I don't think that our teachers overall had a good understanding about the science of reading. We're learning how the brain works. We're learning that we are all born to walk and we're born to talk, but we are not born with the capabilities of learning how to read naturally. I have been teaching for 21 years and comparing how I've taught in the past to how I've taught now, I really do see a difference in students and how they are learning. I thought for sure when I started this that this was going to be a very slow process, but my students really are becoming great readers. M. Good. When they started seeing some of the data and started seeing the results with the kids, it kind of lit a fire. We can't stay where we are because 60 or 70 percent reading at, at level, we can't stay there. If there's stats saying that we could get to 90, even if we get to 80, that's a success. So we haven't been in the 80s with literacy levels of graduates in the state of Ohio. So decoding is like the foundation of being able to be a great reader. It's important for them to understand what a digraph is. Why does two letters coming together make a new sound? We progress monitor our students once a week, every Friday. I can pull up their fluency passage and I can see any patterns that they missed. Maybe they missed all of the words that have a silent E or maybe they missed all of the words with beginning blend. I can look at their accuracy, I can see how many words they're reading per minute, and then I can gear my future instruction based on their needs. I'm constantly asking the questions, is it the long sound, is it the short sound? They remember, oh yeah, there's a vowel helping another vowel, so it's gonna change the way that word works. They get the rules. I think one of the good things about the science of reading is it helps us to identify what the specific problem is. It's not too late to catch high school students up, but you have to have the resources and the trained teachers and the time to do that. If you're a math teacher, you have to think about what does literacy look like in your classroom? What are the skills the students need in order to access what you're trying to teach them? And a lot of those skills involve comprehending the questions. The longer you wait, the more difficult it becomes. Intervention that can occur in kindergarten or first grade might only take, you know, a half an hour a day, but the older they get, they really need more and more time, and the gap continues to widen. I believe in it. It's not new research. I've seen what it can do. But one of the first things you have to do is get understanding. That's why we did the study groups. That's why we looked at the data. And then once we did that, we did significant training. We have to continue the training. So we do need funding to make this initiative go forward. We've purchased a lot of great materials. We've used a lot of money to go into the training processes. The expectation is, Here's what you've learned, you need to be embedding that. What's been exciting for me is really watching the kids grow and develop and become good readers. I've noticed they are really decoding and reading much sooner than I expected. If you're an educator and you look at the stats of this initiative and you don't get kind of excited about it, then you're, you probably shouldn't be an educator.